Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the reference angle theorem. So first, what is the reference angle theorem? The reference angle theorem states that a trigonometric function of any angle and its reference angle differ by at most a sign. So what does this mean? This means that if we have an angle that terminates, let's say, here, and here's our reference angle right here, there's theta hat, that means that any trigonometric function, so let's say sine of theta, sine of theta is either equal to sine of theta hat or it's equal to negative sine of theta hat. So if, let's just say theta hat, our reference angle is 45 degrees, then 45 degrees and we'll say sine of 45 degrees, then this is either the same thing as sine of 45 degrees, which is root two over two, or it's the negative of it negative root two over two. That's it, it can't be anything else in the whole world. So if you're not sure whether it's positive or negative, you have a 50-50 chance, flip a coin, my friend. Okay, we're gonna use a guide below to help us determine what the sign of that trig ratio will be, depending on which quadrant it terminates in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my coordinate plane here, and we're gonna review our trig functions, so sine of theta in the coordinate plane, remember what this ratio is, y over r, and cosine is x over r, and tangent is y over x. And so what we're going to do is we're going to fill in this coordinate grid, coordinate plane, with what is positive in each quadrant. So I'm going to label this what's positive. Okay, starting with quadrant one. So quadrant one, now I'm going to talk about the quadrants and we're going to talk about the x's and y's and whether they're positive or negative. Keep in mind that the r here, the radius, is always positive. So the sine for sine and cosine strictly depends on whether y and x are positive or negative in the given quadrant. And then tangent, we have to look at both of them. So quadrant one, x is positive and y is positive. So since y is positive, sine is positive because that's positive over positive. Cosine is positive for the same reason, positive over positive, and tangent is positive because it's positive over positive. So what's positive here? All three of the trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay, moving over to quadrant two. So quadrant two over here, we're talking about, let me get rid of that. We're talking about x values that are negative. So negative x, positive y. Okay, so I'm gonna erase my check marks. Let's check this out. So sine in quadrant two is y, which is positive over r. So sine is positive. Cosine is x, which is negative over positive r. So cosine is not positive in quadrant two. Tangent is going to be positive over negative. That's gonna be negative. So the only sine, or sorry, the only function that's positive in quadrant two is sine. How about quadrant three? So quadrant three, x values are negative and y values are negative. So everything's negative in quadrant three. What does that do for our trig functions? This would be a negative over a positive. Sine is not positive in quadrant three. Cosine would be negative over positive, no dice. Tangent is going to be negative divided by negative. Negative divided by negative is positive. So tangent is positive in quadrant three. And lastly, quadrant four. Quadrant four, x is positive, y is negative. So y is negative, that rules out sine being positive. This would be positive over positive, cosine's positive. This would be negative over positive. So the only thing that's positive in quadrant four is cosine. Now you might be wondering why I wrote those four capital letters, and that's because I like mnemonic devices. Mnemonic device is something that helps us remember. And so if we can remember that starting in quadrant one, that it's all students take calculus. That tells us what's positive in which quadrant. And of course you need to replace students with sine and take with tangent and calculus with cosine, but you get the idea of how it might help. Now this should be nothing new, right? This is not necessarily new information. It's just we, we found a shortcut and so this is gonna help us between this and the reference angle theorem and one more thing, it's gonna help make our lives a little bit easier. You can also refer back to the unit circle too because that also has all of this information. But this is just kind of you know another way of looking at things that you already know. The other thing that you should already know that we're gonna review one more time is this gorgeous table. You know this table, you love this table, so as I'm writing in the entries, say them with me. Uh, 
we're going to put all of this together in the next few examples. So we have sine of theta, where theta is pi over 6 or 30 degrees, sine is 1 half. If theta is pi over 4 or 45 degrees, sine is root 2 over 2. If we're talking about pi over 3 or 60 degrees, sine is the square root of 3 over 2. Moving on to cosine, so cosine is kind of just the mirror of this. Cosine of 30 degrees or pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4 or 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 3 or 60 degrees is 1 half. Tangent, that's sine over cosine. So this would end up being root 3 over 3 when we rationalize the denominator. Uh, that's going to be something divided by itself, which is 1. And here we would have the square root of 3. Okay. We're ready now. We're going to look at a million examples of the reference angle theorem. No, not really. We're just going to look at six. But remember what the reference angle theorem states. I've said a lot since then. It says that a trigonometric function of an angle and its reference angle differ by at most the sine. So again, it's either equal to the reference angle or it's the negative of the reference angle. Here's our first example. Cosine of 225 degrees. So the important thing here is we want to know where does 225 degrees terminate. And if we fill in our, our coordinate plane, we have 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and if we need it, 360 degrees, but I don't think we do. So 225 is conveniently located between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So here's theta. Okay, a few things we need to decide. First, let's decide what is cosine in quadrant 3. Well, cosine would be referring to the x-coordinate, which would be negative. And if we refer back to our chart of all students take calculus, it looks like tangent's the only thing that's positive in quadrant 3. So we are expecting the answer to be negative here. Cosine of 225 degrees will be negative. What is it, though? So there's infinitely many negative numbers. Well, in order to figure that out, we need to know the reference angle. The reference angle, remember what that is, that's from the terminal side back to the closest x-axis. So we're going to go back up to the x-axis here, and there's our theta hat. Now this is 225 degrees, so the question is, what's the difference between 225 degrees and 180 degrees? So we're going to determine our reference angle by subtracting 225 degrees minus 180, that is 45 degrees. And spoiler alert for these all six of these examples, the reference angle will always be 30, 45, or 60, or pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. So that's why that table was super important. Okay, so now we know our reference angle is 45 degrees. What is cosine of our reference angle? Cosine of 45 degrees, remember what it is, say it with me, root 2 over 2. Now, cosine of 225 degrees is either exactly root 2 over 2 or negative root 2 over 2. Since we decided that cosine is negative in quadrant 3, that means that cosine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 over 2 cosine of 225 degrees is negative root 2 over 2. So again, just to review what we did, first I always suggest sketching an angle, uh, sketching a picture of the angle, so we get a better sense of where it terminates. Then refer to this handy chart to decide whether the value will be positive or negative based on what's positive in which quadrant. Then we figured out the reference angle, so that's what we did here. And then, after we figured out the reference angle, we figured out the function, the given function, so in this case cosine, of the reference angle. From there, we knew that the given angle is either exactly the same as the reference angle, uh, trig value, or it's the negative. Since we decided it was negative from the start, we knew that the, the measure here had to be negative. Like I said, we're going to do a bunch of examples, so let's look at this again. This time we're looking at sine of negative 135 degrees. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch a graph. Because this is negative, I'm going to go clockwise, and I'm going to count negatives. So negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees, negative 360 degrees. Negative 135 degrees will be in between negative 90 degrees and negative 180 degrees. So it's here, and here's theta and we have negative 135 degrees. Okay, so what do we know about this? Well, if we consult our chart, all students take calculus. This angle, negative 135 degrees, terminates in quadrant three. So this indicates to us that our final answer should be negative. It should be negative, right? Because y is negative in quadrant three. 
The next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out the reference angle. The reference angle is in between the x-axis and the terminal side of our angle. So here's our reference angle here. The reference angle, we determine the value by subtracting, it's going to be negative 135 minus negative 180, which will give us 45 degrees. Now if you do this and you subtract those backwards, if you did negative 180 minus negative 135 and you got negative 45, you can just drop the sign. You just subtracted them backwards and that's fine. Um, but remember, it should be an acute positive angle measure. So we're looking for the positive, which would be 45 degrees. It's acute because it's less than 90. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to determine what is sine of our reference angle. What's sine of 45 degrees? Sine of 45 degrees is root 2 over 2. So now last step, based on this, sine of negative 135 degrees is either exactly root 2 over 2 or it's negative root 2 over 2. Since this terminates in quadrant 3, where sine is not positive, it is the negative. So we would say it's negative root 2 over 2. Not so bad, right? Let's try another one. Oh, we switched into radians. We have tangent of 7 pi over 4. Okay, so let's draw this as positive. So we're going to go 0. Up here is pi over 2. Over here is pi. Here's 3 pi over 2. And here is 2 pi. So where is 7 pi over 4? 7 pi over 4 is in quadrant 4. So it's going to be here in quadrant 4. I'm going to go wee. This is uh, theta, which is 7 pi over 4. Okay, so now we're in quadrant 4. Let's see what happens here. All students take calculus. The only uh, function that's positive in quadrant 4 is cosine, so tangent, the result should be negative. Next step, figure out your reference angle. So our reference angle is going to be in between uh, the terminal side of 7 pi over 4 and the closest x-axis, which in this case is 2 pi. So we're going to do 2 pi minus 7 pi over 4. And I need a common denominator, so I'm going to first create a fraction for 2 pi. Then I need a denominator of 4, so I'm going to multiply by 4 over 4. This is going to be 8 pi over 4 minus 7 pi over 4. My reference angle is 1 pi over 4. Apparently I really like the pi over 4s, or the 45 degrees, since this is the third one. I think in the next three we won't see it again. Well, we might see it at least once. Okay, tangent of our reference angle, tangent of, thanks, tangent of pi over 4. Do you have your chart handy or do you know it off the top of your head? It is 1. That indicates to us that tangent of 7 pi over 4 is either also equal to 1 or it's equal to negative 1. We decided in quadrant 4 tangent's negative, so this will be negative 1. All right, now it's your turn. Pause the video, try these three examples, see how you do. All right, I'm just going to come up here and just draw my big all students take calculus, so I only need it once for these three examples. Let's first sketch a graph. Where's cosine negative 150? Here's negative 90 degrees. Here's negative 180 degrees. And here's negative 270 degrees. Um, negative 150, that's in between 180 and, or negative 180 and negative 90. So it's gonna be like here, here's theta. Okay, we're in quadrant three where cosine is negative. So we know that this result is going to be something negative. I'm gonna go ahead and put that negative so I don't forget about it. Next, what do we need? We need to figure out the reference angle. The reference angle is wedged in between the terminal side and the x-axis. So our reference angle is going to be negative 90, sorry, 90, negative 150 minus negative 180, and this will give us 30 degrees. So our reference angle is 30 degrees. Next, we're going to evaluate cosine of 30 degrees. Cosine of 30 degrees Say it with me now, root 3 over 2. So now what we know is that cosine of negative 150 degrees is either also root 3 over 2 or it's negative root 3 over 2. I already put my negative sign up here. I'm sticking to it. It's going to be negative root 3 over 2. Okay, what do we have next? Sine of 2 pi over 3. So first let's get an idea of where 2 pi over 3 is located. We have 0. Up here is pi over 2. Over here is pi, down here is 3 pi over 2. 2 pi over 3, that's not quite as big as pi, but it's bigger than pi over 2, so it's going to terminate here in quadrant 2. Quadrant 2. 
we'll draw our theta in. Okay, quadrant two, tell me about sine. Sine is positive. So that means whatever the reference angle is, or the sine of the reference angle, this will be exactly the same as it. So that's what we need to figure out. What's our reference angle? The reference angle is wedged in between the x-axis, always the x-axis, and the terminal side of the angle. So our reference angle here is going to be pi minus 2 pi over 3. We're going to put pi over 1, and then we need a common denominator. It's going to be 3. So I have 3 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3. That's going to be 1 pi over 3. So our reference angle is pi over 3. What is sine of pi over 3? Sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. Because this terminates in quadrant 2, it will also be positive, so this will also be root 3 over 2. All right, last example. We have tangent of negative 2 pi over 3. Let's see. Let's figure out where this is going to terminate. So we have 0 pi over 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. This is going to turn, sorry, negative. These are negatives. Uh, this is going to terminate in quadrant 3. It's going to terminate in quadrant 3 right about there. So there's theta. All right, tangent quadrant 3 is positive. So this is going to be equal to the reference angle tangent. All right, let's figure out our reference angle. Reference angle wedged in between the x-axis and the angle itself. Our reference angle will be negative 2 pi over 3 minus negative pi. Um, common denominator is going to be 3, so I'm going to put 3 pi over 3 here. Negative 2 pi over 3 plus 3 pi over 3 is pi over 3. So our reference angle is pi over 3, huh, just like the previous example, adorable. And tangent of pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3. So what does that tell us about tangent of negative 2 pi over 3? It's also the square root of 3 because it has the same sign. So to review, what does the reference angle theorem tell us? It tells us that a trigonometric function of an angle can differ by the trigonometric function of its reference angle by at most the sine. These have been examples of the reference angle theorem. Thank you for stopping by.